I'll never be able to make my business profitable. Some people just won't be able to avoid failure, no matter how hard they work. I'm not good with tech. I just can't figure it out. Why am I so negative? I mean, seriously. Inside my brain, it's like open bar 24-7, where negative thoughts are partying like it's 1999. And all the positive stuff, well, it's being held behind the velvet rope by the bouncer, Negative Nancy. Sound like anyone you know? Well, the fact that you clicked on this video suggests to me that that person sounds a little familiar to you. Negative thinking does not have to and should not be allowed to control our lives. Look, I don't have it all figured out, far from it. But there are a few things I do to manage the impact of negative thinking in my life. Understanding where negative thoughts come from is a crucial strategy in keeping them at bay. So let's dig into it together. Hi, I'm Paolo Kernahan. I'm a former television journalist. Today, I teach entrepreneurs and executives how to get attention, impact, and action using a video-first marketing strategy. This is my personal YouTube channel where I look at life through the lens of an entrepreneur. If you'd like more marketing advice, well, you can check out my NoFuss video channel. You can get the link in the description below. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my personal struggles with negative thinking. I'm going to be talking about what I do to combat it and some of the possible causes. If you stick around, I'm pretty sure you'll find something useful from my methods for dealing with negative thoughts. <coughs> okay, confession time. I can be a real negative Nancy. You got that right. Hmm. Okay. When I ask myself the question, why do negative thoughts consume my mind? I get taken back to my younger days, my childhood even. I think for many of us who struggle with negative thoughts, we can trace that back to our early days, our formative experiences, maybe in the school or in the home. Experiences that shaped the way we look at the world around us. For me, early academic pressure was a seed that grew into much of the negativity I live with today. Academic performance is usually interpreted as a predictor of future success. I was more of a creative child, so that hardcore focus on academic achievement was a constant source of stress. Where I grew up in Trinidad and Tobago, there's an exam that kids must take at the age of 11. That single exam, that one moment in time, can determine not only what kind of school you get into, but to a certain extent, the quality of the education you have access to. That's a huge amount of pressure to place on such a young child, and that it affected me for a huge part of my life. Now, as I got older, I started experiencing and encountering a lot of people who were very talented and very creative and had achieved extraordinary success, even though they struggled academically early on in their lives, just like I did. So academic performance, after all, is not the only indicator of how well someone will do in life. Thankfully, I learned that I do not have to follow the path that society lays out for me. You are not who society says you are. Now, I reframed my thinking, so I was able to reframe my focus and my story. Hey, if any of what I'm saying strikes a chord with you, then feel free to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon below so we can continue this entrepreneurial journey together. Tell me, do feelings of being stuck sound familiar? You might feel stuck in your job or your profession or even just in your life. Unfulfilled, maybe. Well, feelings of being frozen in place can be another powerful source of negative thinking. At a certain point in my media career, I found that there was just no more room for growth. My face was pressed against the glass ceiling. I was working in the newsroom doing those quick and dirty stories for the nightly newscast, but I wanted to transition into doing more hard-hitting environmental and social stories. That's what really got me going. Unfortunately, the television stations where I worked, they just weren't interested in that kind of journalism. They were more keen on the cut and dried stories, the crime, the protests, the politics, just slap it together and throw it into the newscast. But that just wasn't enough for me anymore. I started to feel really unfulfilled. 
Those feelings of unfulfillment grew the longer I stayed in the profession. I started to really believe that, you know, if this is how my life is, this is how it will always be. All of that changed when I actively started thinking about what I could do to get unstuck. How could I create my own path rather than sticking to the one I'm on now? And so I started my own video production company to create the environmental and the social content I always wanted to. One of the best things you can do is visualize where you want to be. I mean, think about what you want to be doing with your life. For me, it was spending my days in the bush getting video of wildlife. That was my visualization. You have to find yours. And then you make a plan of action for how you're going to get there. Then you have to have the courage to actually put that plan into action, even if it's just one step at a time. That's how you beat the negativity of feeling stuck in place. Another reason negative thoughts can consume our mind is because humans are hardwired for negativity. Your brain is programmed to give more weight to negative thoughts than positive ones. It's just biology. So for many of us, it can be very difficult to override that negative programming and it has an outsized influence in our lives. Here's what I do to counter this influence. Minimize the negative and maximize the positive. Minimize. So I fumbled a presentation for a project. You know what? That's just one moment in time. I'm not failing hard. That's my mind in overdrive. Then I maximize all the little wins that come along every day. So do I still give in to negative thoughts? Hells yeah. But at least I understand where they come from and that helps me reprogram my mind against them. Less negative thinking means less stress. Less stress means more peace of mind and happiness. That makes me more useful to myself and the people around me, both in my business and my personal life. So it really pays to put some focus on understanding where those negative thoughts come from and working against them. Hey, I want to know your techniques. Tell me how you combat negative thinking. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.